Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, today we are going to start another topic uh, called aces and bases. It's a very important chapter and uh, it can get tricky if you don't get the basic concepts right. Uh, and it also the concepts also extend into organic chemistry when you study carboxylic acids. So first uh, we are going to study what are acids. Acids. Okay. So, acids are substances which release hydrogen ions in water. Acids are substances which substances which release hydrogen ions in water. Which release hydrogen ions in water. Okay, now let's name some acids. There's HCl called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. There is H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. Then you have HNO3, nitric acid. Then we have H3PO4, phosphoric acid. Okay. Uh, all of these acids uh, behave as acids when they release hydrogen ions in water. It was the force of acid and nitric acid or phosphoric acid. When, when they are not aqueous, when they are in pure form, they are actually, they actually cannot act as acids. Because uh, acidity is, acidity is determined by number of or amount of hydrogen ions that are released by a particular substance in water. Okay, now when... Uh, so HCl originally for example is a gas hydrogen chloride okay it becomes hydrochloric acid when HCl is dissolved in water why because hydrogen ions are released okay so all of the acids are going to be aqueous they are going to be aqueous they have to be dissolved in water so that they can release hydrogen ions which are actually responsible for the acidity of an acid okay now we, we can classify acids uh, on the basis of uh, the way they are made, for example, they are called mineral acids. We make them in lab. Okay, then there are also something called organic acids. There are some acids which are called organic acids. Okay, which are uh, naturally, which exist naturally, like lactic acid is present in yogurt. There is citric acid is present in citric fruits. There is citric acid, there is tartaric acid. Okay. There are others, there is acetic acid which is present in vinegar, acetic acid, uh, acetic acid, okay. Other than that, more important classification is in terms of their strength. Uh, there are strong acids, there are strong acids and there are weak acids. Strong acids are those, those acids which ionize completely in water. The strength of an acid will always be dependent on the number of hydrogen ions it releases. So, uh, and the number of hydrogen that the hydrogen ion that releases is actually dependent upon the amount of ionization, that how much it ionizes. The so strong acids are those which completely ionize in water. Uh, they completely ionize in water. Okay. For example, HCl is one example. Okay. Uh, when it is added in water, oh sorry, HCl, when added in water, it will form H plus ion and Cl minus 1 ions. When H2SO4 is dissolved in water, it forms two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion. Okay, so uh, they can also write, ask you to write the dissociation equation for the H2SO4. Uh, dissociation or ionization is the same thing, it is the conversion of a compound into its ions. Now, let's talk about weak acids. Weak acids are those acids which partially ionize in water. Weak acids partially ionize in water. They ionize partially in water. Okay. And uh, for example, uh, carbonic acid is a weak acid. Okay. It will split into hydrogen ions and carbonate ions. But since it is not completely ionized, it is represented.
represented by this arrow head okay which is going in two directions that means that some of uh, that some or uh, most of the carbonic acid remains unionized it remains unionized that's why we have uh, the, this two directional arrow whenever you are writing the dissociation of a weak acid they will tell you uh, that some acid is a weak acid write down the dissociation of that acid so always remember that you'll use this arrow head this two this two directional arrow because it shows that all of the acid is not converted into ions uh, uh, some of it uh, remains on the left hand side or actually some of it most of it that's why it's a weak acid it's really partially ionized in water okay so that's how you classify acids now moving on to their properties let's talk about their properties uh, properties there are some physical ones there are physical properties and then there are chemical properties what are their physical properties uh, one of them is they are sour in taste they are sour in taste one example would be if you if you can taste uh, some edible acids like for example if you eat orange you know that it is sour and it contains citric acid which is responsible for that taste so they are sour in taste okay uh, the other property is they turn they turn blue litmus paper red they turn blue litmus red okay uh, this litmus paper is a type of indicator we are going to study uh, it later in this lesson uh, but just remember that they turn blue litmus paper red okay they are good conductors of electricity they are good conductors of electricity. Why? Because when they are dissolved in water, the ions are free to move. So they become good. Uh, so these ions carry electric current through the acid. They are good conductor of electricity. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the gist of the acids, which is the chemical properties. Okay. Number one chemical property. When acids, when acids react with metals, they form salt and hydrogen they form salt and hydrogen okay let's take any acid i am taking it here okay and it reacting with sodium how does the salt form salt is formed when metal when metal one atom of a metal hits one atom or molecule of the negative ion of the acid a salt is formed when one atom of a metal hits the uh, negative ion of the negative ion of the acid again a salt is formed when one atom of a metal hits the negative ion of the acid ok for example when Na is hitting Cl so Na is plus 1 Cl is minus 1 so it will form NaCl and hydrogen will be released so there are two hydrogens over here and one hydrogen over here uh, either you can multiply this by 2 and then multiply this by 2 and then multiply this by 2 or you can simply say this one hydrogen here, two hydrogens here, multiply it from one over here. Okay. Uh, okay, let's do another example. Reacting H2SO4 with the uh, sodium, let's say sodium. Okay. Now metal is hitting the negative ion. Do not write NaSO4. You cannot write it like that. Whenever you are going to write the formula of a compound, you will have to make sure uh, that you write it in the correct way. Okay, you follow. You should follow the pro proper protocol, which is you have to write it in ionic form. Sodium is Na plus one, and sulfate is SO4 minus two. Two comes here, one goes there. So Na2SO4 is formed, and hydrogen is released. Now you have to balance it. The two sodiums and the rest of it is balanced. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, reacting phosphoric acid with um, let's react phosphoric acid with uh, magnesium. Now magnesium will hit the negative ion of the acid to form a salt. So magnesium is plus two and phosphate is PO four minus three. So three comes here, two goes there. So you will get Mg three PO four two magnesium phosphate and hydrogen. Uh, you have to balance it. Phosphates are balanced, hydrogen becomes 6, so you balance the hydrogens and magnesium are 3, magnesium becomes 3. So, this is the first property. Okay, let's move on to the second property. 
Let's move on to the second property. Okay, second property states that when acids react with metal oxides, when acids react with metal oxides, they form salt and water. Okay, now take an, any acid which is let's say HCl and take any oxide, any metal oxide. Now here you'll have to uh, write the correct formula of a metal oxide. Let's say if you're taking sodium oxide, you cannot just write NaO. No, whenever you're writing a chemical formula of a compound, you will always follow the right protocol. First you'll have to write, first you'll have to check in the background its ions and then make the chemical formula of the compound. Let's say I'm making sodium oxide. I am reacting HCl with sodium oxide. You can join any metal with the oxygen. Okay? I am choosing sodium as a metal. So sodium is Na plus 1 and oxide is O minus 2. So you have Na2O. Okay, so you will react this with Na2O. And how does the salt form? Salt forms when metal hits the negative ion of the acid. Remember, this 2 doesn't matter here. Just remember this one atom of sodium is hitting chlorine. This 2 will be balanced later on. Okay, by multiplying with my uh, by appropriate coefficients. Right now, you just uh, need to know that a salt is formed when metal hits the negative ion of the acid. Metal here is sodium, which is plus one, and chlorine is Cl minus one. You'll have NaCl, and along with that, you'll have water. Now, Na is two here, two one here, it becomes two here. Okay, and chlorine becomes two, chlorine becomes two, hydrogen becomes two, hydrogens are already two, so it's balanced. Let's take another oxide. Let's react H2SO4 with aluminium oxide. Now, aluminium oxide, you cannot write ALO whenever you're going to write its oxide, you're going to follow the proper protocol. I'm repeating again because many students make this mistake that they just combine them uh, without thinking uh, what procedure to follow. Whenever you're writing the formula of a compound, please make sure that you check in background, not at the front, in background, in the working side that you write the proper ions. For example, I'm reacting here uh, aluminum oxide with H2SO4 but first you need to know what is the formula of aluminum oxide. So aluminum is plus 3, oxygen is O minus 2 oxide is, it cross multiplies and you'll have Al2O3. So that's aluminum oxide for you. And now how would salt be formed? Aluminum will hit the negative ion of the acid. So aluminum is plus 3, okay. Aluminium has a plus 3 charge, sulfate has a minus 2 charge, so it becomes Al2SO4 for taken power 3. Okay, and other than that, water will be formed. There are 3 sulfates over here, 1 over here, you wrote 3 sulfates. Hydrogen becomes 6, hydrogen is 2 here, it becomes 6. As a result, oxygen becomes 3, oxygen is 3. Okay, so it is balanced. The third chemical property. Let's move on to the third chemical property. These are the two that we started first. Let's move on to the third chemical property, which is when acids react with metal hydroxides and acids react with metal hydroxides, they form salt and water again. Salt and water. Take any acid again. Uh, I'm taking HNO3 nitric acid. And any metal hydroxide, now you, let's say I'm taking calcium hydroxide. So calcium is plus 2, hydroxide is OH minus 1. So now you'll write its chemical formula will be CaOH taken power 2. So CaOH taken power 2. And how will the salt form? Metal will hit the negative ion of the acid. Metal here is calcium plus 2. And negative ion is NO3 minus 1. So you'll have calcium nitrate, which will be CaNO3 taken power 2. and Water. Okay, you have to balance it. There are two nitrates on the right, one on the left, it's balanced. Okay, now, uh, let's see if it's balanced properly. Uh, as a result, we have two nitrates, there are two nitrates, there are two oxygens. Here, there are two oxygens, there is only one oxygen over here. So, we'll have to check properly here. Uh, two hydrogens plus two, four hydrogens. Here, there are two hydrogens. Now, it's balanced. Okay. So let's take another acid, take any acid, HCl, let's take HCl and react it with aluminium hydroxide, so let's react with aluminium hydroxide, so aluminium is plus 3, hydroxide is OH minus 1, so AlOH taken power 3, so 
मेटल विल हिट दी नेगेटिव आयन ऑफ द एसिड एल इज प्लस 3 सीएल इज माइनस 1 सो एल सीएल 3 एंड वाटर विल बी फॉर्म थ्री क्लोरीन्स थ्री क्लोरीन एज अ रिजल्ट थ्री हाइड्रोजन्स प्लस 3 6 हाइड्रोजन सो थ्री हाइड्रोजन थ्री टू द 6 हाइड्रोजन ऑक्सीजन बिकम्स 3 ऑक्सीजन आर ऑलरेडी फ्री सो इक्वेशन इज बैलेंस Okay, now the last property, fourth property, that is that when acids, when acids react with metal carbonates, when acids react with metal carbonates, salt, salt, carbon dioxide and water will be formed. Okay, take any acid, I'm taking H2SO4, okay, take any metal carbonate. Let's say I am taking uh, calcium carbonate, so I have Ca plus 2 and carbonate is CaCO3 minus 2, so we will have CaCO3. So, calcium carbonate is there. Now, metal will hit the negative ion of the acid. So, calcium is plus 2, okay, and uh, sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So, calcium sulfate will be formed, which will be SeSO4, and along with that, carbon dioxide and water will be formed. The equation is already balanced, so that's how you write uh, for that's how you write uh, you know that's how you react acid with metal carbonates. Okay, uh, all you need to understand here is how salt is formed. The rest is pretty much the same. You just need to remember the properties that when acids react with metals, salt and hydrogen will be formed. When acids react with metal hydroxides or metal oxides, salt and water will be formed. And when acids react with metal carbonates, salt, carbon dioxide, and water is formed. You just need to remember how salt is formed, which is that when metal hits the negative ion of the acid. So that's all from acids. Moving on to bases. Okay, let's do bases. Now. Have bases. What are bases? Uh, I'll get to the definition later on because the thing is that uh, there has been many models that explains the definitions of acids and bases. Uh, right, so I'm going to get uh, to it later uh, the definition, but you just need to know that uh, there are two types of bases there are metal oxides and then there are metal hydroxides. Metal oxides and there are metal hydroxides. Now, uh, metal oxides are water insoluble, we call them water insoluble bases. And metal hydroxides, most of them are water soluble bases. Okay, most of, at least alkali, alkali, metal uh, group one hydroxide are water soluble. Water soluble hydroxides. Uh, sorry, water soluble bases. Okay, the water soluble bases we have another name for this. And we call them alkalis. Okay, alkalis are substances which release which release hydroxide ions in water. Hydroxide ions in water. Now, this definition is often used for bases as well. This is not an all encompassing definition, this is, this is not applicable to all the bases because there are many bases which do not release hydroxide in water, but that is out of the scope of uh, your syllabus. Just remember that uh, if, you, if they ask you uh, to write the definition of base, you can say that release hydroxide ions in water. Okay, it's a very limited definition, but it works as far as the mass is concerned. Uh, okay. Now, uh, you should know, again, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, giving you a recap again, that uh, bases are split into metal oxides and metal hydroxides. Metal oxides are water insoluble, metal hydroxides are water soluble, we call them alkalis. Okay, so we can say that all alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. Sometimes it gets confusing that uh, students start to use base and alkali as an alternate. Because they are not two names of the same things. All alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis because some bases are also metal oxide, which are not alkalis. Okay, uh, getting down to their properties, as they are uh, just, we need to know that they are bitter in taste. They are bitter in taste, and uh, they have, uh, they turn red litmus paper blue. They turn red litmus paper. Blue. They are slippery to touch. They are slippery to touch. Okay, there are some physical properties. As far as their 
chemical properties concerned so the first reaction that is extremely important is one is called a neutralization reaction neutralization reaction uh, okay you have studied this reaction in acids as well but uh, that was from a different point of view uh, the dynamics are the same okay so what is the neutralization reaction neutralization reaction is when alkalis or bases react with acids to form salt and water to form salt and water why is it called neutralization reaction you need to understand one thing uh, you need to understand uh, that uh, acids and alkalis are present on the opposite side of the spectrum okay uh, for example if acids are plus and alkalis are minus so when they are both reacting together they are actually neutralizing each other's effect okay and as a result salt and water is formed we'll come to uh, the point uh, to explain what is neutral what is neutrality as far as acids and bases are concerned later in the lesson but so far just know that uh, when acids and alkalis or bases that react together they neutralize each other in a reaction called neutralization reaction when i was saying that uh, you started this reaction in acids uh, as well so uh, alkalis are actually metal hydroxides right let's say calcium hydroxide is an alkali or let's say sodium hydroxide is an alkali okay it's an alkali and it's metal hydroxide it reacts with acid to form salt and water we started this reaction in uh, acids as well okay now one thing that you need to remember for uh, neutralization reactions that always the ionic equation for neutralization reactions are h plus ion react with hydroxide ions to form water okay you can do this because this is aqueous this is aqueous as well this is aqueous as well okay you are left with water and its ions you can uh, you can solve it to confirm it but uh, when they ask you to write the reaction uh, the ionic equation for a particular reaction you can simply check if it's a neutralization reaction you can actually write this equation with your eyes closed or if you want to solve it it's your call it's just a shorter way to remember this okay another chemical property of bases is that when they react um okay so another reaction let's say forming with ammonium salts forming alkalis or bases with ammonium salts ammonium salts first we need to know what are ammonium salts ammonium is an ion by what how does a salt form uh, we studied these salts like sodium chloride calcium chloride calcium sulfate right uh, metal was hitting the negative ion of the acid so when we talking about ammonium salt the negative ion would come from an acid like chlor uh, chloride will come from hcl or uh, uh, phosphate will come from uh, phosphoric acid sulfate will come from sulfuric acid okay and then you'll have ammonium ion itself so when they react uh, so basically ammonium salt means ammonium chloride or ammonium phosphate or ammonium sulfate ammonium is hitting the negative ion of the acid okay now what happens when alkalis are warmed with ammonium salts ammonia is released okay uh, so let's react sodium hydroxide react sodium hydroxide with an ammonium salt let's take ammonium chloride okay you will form a salt okay and then you have ammonia that is released and you also have water so it's often asked uh, that what would happen if a particular alkali is reacting with an ammonium salt which gas is released so we'll always say ammonia and after that there is a test for ammonia since ammonia is alkaline so you can use litmus paper right right litmus paper it turns red litmus paper green uh, okay now let's talk about different types of oxides types of oxides let's take a different other i'm a bit bored with okay let's take what do you think black black this works see how it so types of oxides so there are acidic oxides there are acidic oxides and there are basic oxides 
basic oxides and then we have something called amphoteric oxides amphoteric oxides acha uh, non metal oxides are called acidic oxides non metal why because when non metal oxides are dissolved in water they form acids for example you dissolve so2 in water <coughs> you will get h2so3 or h2so4 right if you dissolve carbon dioxide in water the high chance you're going to get carbonic acid which is another acid again uh, we add nitrogen nitrogen oxide sorry Hydrogen oxide in water, you can get nitrous acid or nitric acid. Okay, so that's why acidic oxides are usually non-metal oxides. You need to remember that. And basic oxides are usually metal oxides. Why? Because they form basic solutions when dissolved in water. How? Let's take calcium oxide. If you dissolve it in water, you will get calcium hydroxide. right you take sodium and yeah you take sodium oxide you dissolve it in water you'll get sodium hydroxide see they are alkaline solutions they are basic solutions so that's why basic oxides are called uh, all you take it they will give you certain oxide and they'll ask you whether it's acidic or basic for example if they ask you what is silicon oxide so you can say okay silicon is a non metal so non metal oxides are acidic oxide you say it's an acidic oxide okay so uh, this these are the type of questions that usually come in exams now uh, let's talk about an interesting amphoteric this one has said it's amphoteric oxide let's talk about this one amphoteric oxide has the capability to behave as both acids it behaves both like acids as well as bases both like acids as well as bases as well as bases uh okay now there are three oxide amphoteric oxides that should be familiar with like zinc oxide there's aluminum oxide and lead oxide these are the three oxide uh, which are amphoteric uh, not only three of these oxides are amphoteric there are others as well but these are the three oxides that are tested in at the o levels so you just remember that zinc aluminum and lead oxide are amphoteric oxide Uh, what do, what do I mean uh, that they can react as both acids and well as bases? So let's check it. Let's take the example of zinc oxide. Uh, uh, first, let's see how it acts as an acid. How can I check whether a substance is acting as an acid? I can react it with a base, and if salt and water is formed, it will show me that it is acting as an acid. Let's say if I react zinc oxide uh, again. Okay. I have to check whether zinc oxide can act as an acid. I'll react it with an alkali. Let's say I react it with NaOH. It's an alkali. Okay. Then what would what should happen if it's if it has the capability of acting as an acid, then it will form salt and water. So what will happen here? Uh, it will have it will form sodium Na two Zn two Na two. It will form a salt Na two. Then and water. If I have to check whether uh, it has the capability of acting as a base, so I have to react zinc oxide with an acid acting as a base. So you'll react zinc oxide with an acid. Again, salt and water will be formed like this. Okay. So that's what amphoteric oxides are for. Okay. Now uh, to close this chapter, uh, the last topic is knowing what are indicators. What are indicators? Indicators. Indicators are substances. They are dyes or pigments or the colored substances, uh, which tells us whether a solution is an acidic solution or a basic solution. How do they do that? they have a particular color in acidic solution and basic solution let's say i have an indicator a it would have let's say yellow color in acid and blue color in base so if uh, if i add it in a solution and the and the color turns and the color turns to blue i would say that it's a basic solution that's the basic 
a philosophy behind indicators so there are some famous indicators that uh, you should remember one is called uh, litmus paper that we studied just now uh, the first one is litmus paper litmus paper and there is something called methyl orange methyl orange and then there is phenolphthalein phenolphthalein It spells like phenolphthalein, it's phenolphthalein. Okay, uh, so let's see the colors in acids in acid okay, and in base. So, litmus paper is as we know that acids turn blue, litmus paper red. So, lit the color of the litmus paper in acid will be red, and in the bases turn red, litmus paper blue. So, that the color of the litmus paper in base would be blue. Uh, methyl orange in acid is red, so you have to remember, and in base it is yellow. Phenolphthalein's color in acid is colorless, actually, it's colorless in acid and it's pink in base. But the boss of all indicators is called the universal indicator, it is the boss of all indicators. Why? Because it doesn't only tell us whether a solution is acidic or basic, it also tells us that how strong, how strongly acidic a solution is or how strongly basic a solution is. It also tells us about the strength of acidic or basic solution. And how does it do that? It uses something called a pH chart. Let's uh, go to the pH chart. So universal indicator actually uses uh, values, mathematical values uh, ranging from 0 to 14 on a scale called a pH scale. pH means, uh, pH tells us about the concentration of hydrogen ions in a particular solution. It actually measures the concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay. Now, so basically how does it work? For example, for each pH value, universal indicator has a particular color. Okay, uh, for example, if uh, there was a solution, I had a solution in a beaker, right, and I added universal indicator into it and it turned out to be this blue, it, this blue color, it turns out to be this blue color, it became this blue color. So I can just relate that blue color with on the pH scale and I can safely assume that pH is equal to 8. Now, what does this 8 means? Uh, we need to understand something here. Okay, when pH is equal to 7, the solution is neutral. It's neither acidic nor basic. Uh, the pH of water at room temperature is, is 7. Okay, now this basically this whole scale is split into uh, two parts, and the centermost part is the neutral. On the left hand side, the solution will be acidic, and on the right hand side, the solution will be alkaline, which means that from pH values 0 to 6. Uh, the solution is going to be acidic and from pH values 8 to 14 the solution is going to be alkaline okay now how do we know the strength of the acid and the you know of the acid and the base uh, more you go towards the left before after when you go you know uh, to the left of 7 more you go to the left more acidic more acidic or more will be the strength of the acid more will be the strength of acid more will be the strength of acid okay which means that uh, an acid with pH 1 will be much stronger than the acid which pH is equal to 6 okay if pH there are two acids whose one pH is equal to 6 and the other pH is equal to 1 pH 1 would have be a stronger acid okay and uh, uh, about the uh, bases, more you go towards the right, more will be the strength of a base, more will be the strength of base, which means, it actually means that uh, there, if there are two bases, one's pH is equal to 9 and the other one's pH is equal to 13, so the one with the greater pH will be a stronger base. Will be a stronger 
okay so uh, that was the uh, this was the last concept that you needed to uh, wrap up this chapter so uh, this was all from this chapter now we're going to uh, do some past paper questions and apply these concepts so switching to another screen okay so which oxide is amphoteric i told you that there are three oxides are amphoteric there is aluminum oxide there is zinc oxide and then there is lead oxide so clearly it's going to be aluminum oxide the ph of an aqua solution of hcl is 2 what will be the ph of the acid after the addition of 10 g of sodium chloride sodium chloride is a salt okay if you that salt are formed after the neutralization reaction which means the salt is going to be neutral right so uh, if you add 10 g of salt or 20 or for or maybe 100 ph is not going to change okay if you added something acidic then ph would have reduced and if you added something basic ph would have increased from 2 but since you added something neutral ph would remain the same question number 3 which row correctly describes the oxide aluminum oxide is amphoteric so it will either be c or d potassium oxide is a metal oxide and metal oxides are metal oxides are basic oxides okay so again c and d can both hold true uh, magnesium oxide is again another is again a metal oxide which is basic oxide it's not amphoteric so answer would be d okay so which pair of substances react to form salt and water only uh, if you react sodium chloride with silver nitrate so sodium will join with nitrate and silver will join with chloride so uh, no it cannot be the answer it is not forming salt and water only Uh, you are reacting uh, sodium hydroxide which is a metal hydroxide with acid so when metal hydroxide react with acid yes salt and water are formed so the answer would be b why is c not the answer because in case of sodium carbonate reacting with an acid carbon dioxide is also formed and when you react and d is not the answer because when you react metal with acid hydrogen is released and not water so okay uh, question number 5 which reaction does not involve neutralization neutralization is reaction of base with an acid to form salt and water now h2so4 is uh, is acid nh3 aqueous is also a base and salt is being formed so this is a neutralization reaction now if acid is reacting with a salt barium chloride is a salt it's not an alkali and again salt is formed but not water so b is not the neutralization reaction even c is a neutralization reaction because base is reacting with an acid here uh, again another base which is an alkali is reacting with an acid to form salt and water so answer would be b which solution containing one mole per dm cube of the compound would have the lowest ph lowest ph would be of strongest acid right uh sodium hydrogen carbonate is an alkali so obviously it will have ph uh, greater ph and sodium chloride is neutral it will also have pH around seven. HCl is a strong acid. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. How do you know that? You would get to know once you study organic. Uh, but ethanoic acid is actually an organic acid. So uh, its organic acids are generally weak. So acid, hydrochloric acid will be the answer. It's a strong acid, so lowest pH. Which statement about oxide is correct? A basic oxide is an oxide of a non-metal. A basic oxide is an oxide of a non-metal. Uh, no. Basic oxide is an oxide of a metal. Acidic oxides contain ionic bonds. Acidic oxides are formed from non-metal oxides. The non-metal oxides means, uh, uh, for example, uh, but in fact, a non-metal oxide will be, for example, SO two reacting with water, right? So he is asking you, acidic oxides contain ionic bonds. Metal ox, non-metal oxide are acidic oxides. So they are formed from two non-metals so they cannot contain ionic bond they must contain covalent bonds an amphoteric oxide contains a metal that's true zinc aluminum lead all are metals c okay when the product of a reaction between two gases is added to water a solution of ph7 is formed which could be these gases ph7 means neutral and neutral belongs to water Okay. Hydrogen and chlorine will form HCl, so clearly it's an acid. Hydrogen and nitrogen will form ammonia, which is a base. Uh, it's a basic gas. Hydrogen and oxygen will form water, so C would be the answer. 
Okay. A sample of air was bubbled into water. The pH of the water slowly changed from 7 to 6. Okay. So, its pH change from, uh, pH actually uh, shifted from a neutral spectrum to the acidic spectrum. Which means that something acidic actually entered into water. And uh, air has nitrogen, carbon dioxide. Okay. So, carbon dioxide is actually what? It's a non-metal oxide and it's actually a acidic oxide. So, answer would be carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon monoxide is also a non-metal oxide, but it is, it is uh, not present in air. Uh, it's, not an, it's not a natural component of air. Which reaction occurring in uh, that is from another chapter. What is the property of hydroxide ion? It combines with hydrogen to form water. No, many students make this mistake that OH ions uh, plus hydrogen ions form water. This is true. It is it is the extent. It is actually the net ionic equation of a particular reaction. This is not happening. Like hydrogen ions are not uh, reacting with hydroxide ions to form water. This is the inference from the neutralization reaction. Original reaction is something else. So this is not true. Okay, it is present in water. Yes, yeah, that's true. Hyd hydro hydroxide ion is present in water. When water ionizes, it forms hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So, answer would be B. It readily breaks down into hydrogen and oxide ions. That's not true as well. It travels to cathode. Uh, that is from another chapter. The answer is B. Which com calcium compound does not increase the pH of acidic soil? Uh, calcium carbonate, uh, calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide. They all have basic properties. Calcium sulfate does not. It will not increase. It's neutral. Okay. Uh, an excess of calcium hydroxide is added to an acidic soil. What happens to the pH of the soil? So obviously, you added excess calcium hydroxide, so it is going to be greater than seven. The answer would be D. It will increase. Obviously, pH would increase. Which substances react together to give hydrogen? Calcium oxide and water give water. Uh, calcium oxide and water uh, they do give hydrogen. Okay. Uh, okay, this question requires some uh, input from another chapter, so I'm just going to skip it for now. Okay. This is well. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, sodium hydroxide solution was added to dilute hydrochloric acid. The pH of the solution in the flask was measured at intervals that until no further change of pH took place. Okay, no further change of pH would took place if sodium hydroxide is added in excess. What would be the pH change of this in this reaction? It will obviously increase. The, uh, you remain, you, the answer can be C or D. It increases to 7? No. He asked you until no further change of pH took place. It will uh, no further change of pH will only took place if uh, you added actually uh, the solution in the conical flask will be will be uh, will contain an excess of sodium hydroxide such that the uh, pH of the solution is the pH of sodium hydroxide so it will obviously increase to 12. Okay, so that's all from this chapter. I hope you grasp the basic concept associated with it. And so I'll be back with another important chapter and that is preparation of salts. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz.